We are live. Okay, so first of all, find the midpoint and the length. So my midpoint formula is going to be the x2 plus the x1 over 2 comma the y2 plus the y1 over 2. That's my midpoint. So that'll simplify to a 1 over 2, 18 over 2, which is a 1 half 9. Please tell me to slow down if I get going too fast. Will you tell me that? I don't mean to go fast. Okay. Distance or length, same thing, length or distance. It's the big square root of your parentheses x2, and these are all in your notes, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, and these formulas are in your notes. That's going to give me a negative 5 squared plus a 6 squared. Twenty-five plus thirty-six to sixty-one. Square to sixty-one or approximately equal to, I don't know, where's a calculator? I get about seven point eight. Okay, thumbs up so far? Everybody agree? Okay, that's pretty easy. Okay, let's take a look at number two. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Number two says, find the equation line AB. So to find the equation line, I'm going to first need the slope. And slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, that's slope. And again, these formulas are in your notes somewhere. 6 over negative 5 is my slope. In this case, I might even change it to a decimal, really, or a negative 1.2, just because I kind of, it's going to be easier to work with a decimal than a fraction. Now, if it's equation line, I can pick either point. I like the y minus y1. I like this formula. You guys might like, Jose, you liked y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah, I do. And you guys, I don't care which one you use. I'm going to use this one. Um, if you want y equals mx plus b, you can do that. Um, I'll pick probably the 3, 6. It's easier to work with. So y minus 6, because that's my y value. My slope is a negative 1.2x minus 3, because that's my x value, okay? Or if you use y equals mx plus b, you guys know how to do that. I'm going to distribute negative 1.2x plus um, 3.6, right? Yeah, I can do that math. And then plus 6 plus 6, y equals negative 1.2x plus 9.6, okay? Lauren, if I make a dumb mistake, will you tell me nicely? Yes. Thank you. All right, number three. Okay. X-intercepts and y-intercepts. Let's just do the, like, well, the, by the zeros, right? So if I've got 2x minus 5y equals negative 10, if I cover up the x, it's like making the x zero. So it should give me a y-intercept. I'd get a 0 comma 2. Do you guys see the 2? Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. That's my y-intercept. If I cover up the negative 5, or that y equals 0, right? If I let y equals 0, then I'll get negative 5 for my x. 
right? If we need the slope, we'll just solve for y. How am I doing? Am I going too fast? So it's our slope. I'm just going to go minus 2x, minus 2x, negative 5y equals negative 2x minus 10. Divide by negative 5. And I'll get y equals 2 fifths x plus 2. So there's my slope. You could have graphed these two points and got the slope as well. Does that make sense? Put on graph paper. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, that's great. But that's a great, great way to do it too. I mean, graphing is always a good technique. Um, yes. Yes. Okay, you got it? Okay. Um, find the equation of the vertical line. So the vertical line, the probably, I already know the answer is x equals 3. I already know that, but I've been doing math for a long time. But if you draw a picture, it might, you might see it. <laughs> okay, uh, four. So if it's a vertical line, it's got to go straight up, right? It has to be x equals three. If it's a horizontal line, it would be a y equals. Does that make sense? This is the vertical. You might get the horizontal. You never know. I might put the horizontal, but the horizontal will be the y value, whatever the y value is, okay? I think, I'm hoping this is going to be an easy quiz. It's mostly just a review of all the algebra we've had. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, but then it was a COVID year, right? It was. Okay, find a line parallel and perpendicular. So there's two parts to this, okay? So on five, first let's do the parallel part. We know we need same slope. And we have two lines of parallel. They're parallel if their slopes are the same. So, I take my 3x minus my 4y equals 18, and I'm going to solve for y, right? So, I've got minus 3x minus 3x, negative 4y equals a negative 3x plus 18. Divide by negative 4 all the way across. Y equals 3 fourths x. Um, let's see, 9 halves minus 4.5. But I don't really care about the 4.5. All I want is the slope. Okay, that's all I care about. 4.5 is insignificant. Okay, so if I want a parallel, I like this formula. Jose, you like y equals mx plus b. They both, they both work. So the point I need is at 8, negative 16, right? And so I'll put my negative 16 for the y, I'll put the 8 in for the x, and I'll put the 4 thirds in for m. Okay. So I put my slope in for the m. I put my negative 16 in for the y value and the 8 in for the x value, right? And double negative, so I have a y plus 16 equals, and I'll distribute, I get a 3 fourths x. 4 goes into 8 2 times 
2 times 3 is 6. Want to see that again? 4 goes into 8. 2 times times 3 is 6. Or 3 times 8 is 24 divided by 4 is 6. Same thing, okay? Okay, then minus 16, minus 16, I get y equals a 3 fourths x minus 22. Okay, this line is parallel to this line. They're parallel. They are parallel, same slope. And this line has to go through the point 8, negative 16, because we forced it, okay? Now, perpendicular, all we're going to do is the same process, except we're going to take our slope, and we're going to use the perpendicular slope, which is the negative 4 thirds, right? So I'm going to use my y minus my y1 equals my m times my x minus x1. And I'll put my negative 16 again for y. Negative 4 thirds in for the slope. And I'll put in the 8 for the x, okay? Oh, I might get a decimal answer, but that's okay. I can deal with that. Y plus 16 equals negative 4 thirds x plus, let's see, 24 divided by 3, right? 32. 32 divided by 3. 33, hold on. 32 divided by 3. 10 and 2 thirds minus 16 minus 16. I get negative 5 and a third. So I get y equals negative 4 thirds x minus 5 and 1 third. Okay. They are perpendicular because they have different, they have the opposite slopes. This one goes to the point six, negative 16, 8 because I forced it to, okay? Okay. Thumbs up, Ellie? Okay, good. All right. Um, not too bad so far. You guys agree? Now, the perpendicular bisector, okay, is 6. To do the perpendicular bisector, we need three things. We need slope, and then we'll make it a perpendicular slope by changing it. We need midpoint, and then we'll use our y minus y1 for the equation, m times x minus x1 with these two known pieces of information, okay? So those are the three things we need to find perpendicular bisector. So to get the slope, first I'm just gonna go ahead and go my y2 minus my y1 over my x2 minus my x1, okay? There's Brittany. So I'm going to get a negative 18 over negative 6, which is positive 3 over 1, okay? But I don't want that slope, right, Lauren? I'm not going to make this mistake again. What I really need is a negative 1 third. And we'll use that in this formula, okay? So I change the perpendicular slope. Now, I need the midpoint. So to do the midpoint... I'm going to use my midpoint formula, and that is going to go x2 plus x1 over 2 comma y2 plus y1 over 2. I'm going to get 2 over 2 and 2 over 2, right? Which gives me a midpoint of 1, 1, okay? So now... I'm just going to take my information and put it into my equation line, point slope formula, put that the point, the midpoint, and the slope there. So I'll go y minus y1, which is 1, equals negative 1 third times x minus x1, which is 1, okay? And I'm just going to simplify. Distribute get a negative one-third x plus one-third plus one-third plus one-third plus one plus one sorry my bad plus one plus one I get one and one-third negative one-third x plus 
one and one third. Okay. You guys got it? Okay. All right. Turn the page. And let's take a look at, okay, seven. Solve the system. All right. Yeah, I think most of this quiz is all review. All right. Um, what do you think? Suggestions? Suggestions? Yeah, in fact, I'll go in, I totally agree. How about negative four even better? Because then that makes them the opposite. Yeah, yeah, no, Lauren, you're right, because you could have either subtracted, right? Okay, I'm going to go negative four, because I'll make that a positive four. I like her idea. So we're going to rewrite it. 7x minus 4y equals 8. Uh, negative 20x positive 4y equals negative 8. Oh, that's nice. I get zero. I always like zero. Zero is a great answer. It really is a good answer, because here I get a negative 13x equals, and I was thinking, oh man, I'm going to get a fraction with 13 in it, that's going to suck, but I got zero, so I like that, huh? Divide by negative 13, who cares, I know it's already going to be zero, so the x value is zero, so it's zero something, I don't know, let's see, I'll put the zero, have it right in there, okay, substitute it in. Go five times zero minus y equals two, or minus y equals two, or y equals negative two. There we go. That's the solution right there. That worked out nicely. I like that zero. I was sweating it out, thinking, oh no, I'm going to get an ugly fraction, but he didn't. All right, we're almost done. Uh, negative two, yeah. Hey, Carly. So actually, the juniors can't have a fun run because they can't earn any money. <laughs> no, they can't. So hold well, on. So anyway. Why, why are we even having that? I don't know. Anyway, I'll, have, I'll talk to Mr. Daly about this because it's like the go out. Wait, is that like the color run or whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, color run. That was cool. OK, so they need to rent. So for an income, no, we're gonna just try. <laughs> to make money, they're going to have to charge $15 a runner, but you got to rent the park, okay? You guys okay with that? Uh, no. Vincent is not. That is too much for a park. Yeah, I know. I agree. Uh, if only 100 runners are allowed, what is the domain range? Okay, so 100 runners, so the domain's got to be, what's the domain, you guys? Runners, which is how many? Yeah, so let's go to zero, comma, 100. That's, so that's a great question. So if nobody shows up, I would accept that. I think I'm going to include zero because it is possible for zero runners to show up. But Lauren, if you put that on a test, I would accept that because I understand your thought process, okay? No Very good. Because right? you could say, well, we can't have a fun run if nobody shows up. That would be your argument, right? See, Mr. Davies, if nobody shows up, we don't have a fun run, so this problem can't exist, right? Um, range? Well, we're going to lose $300. You guys agree? But if everybody shows up, what's that? 150, 15 times 100, that's 1,500 minus 3. What's that, 1,200? Probably 1,200, right? Okay. You guys like interval notation better than set notation, don't you? It's a lot nicer. You guys do interval notation and calculus, I assume? Do you guys do cal or would you write it like this? I personally write it like that. You like it like that? Yeah. Yeah, I personally like it like this because it's easier. <laughs> yeah. This actually makes, this actually is easier to understand because you know what it's saying where this is something new right or you can do this negative 300 right that's set notation okay what's the break-even point well um, let's set this equal to zero where our income is zero 
So if we make, if our income is zero, we've broke even, how many tickets do we have to sell to pay for the park, right? Break even, bring over 300, divide by 15, should be 20? 20. So we need at least 20 runners to show up to break even, okay? So um, I am going to have you do a little bit of a homework assignment, um, and I'll work with you. Um, let me stop the video, and I want to load up the video, but 